Hello there and welcome to the final chapter, the last leg in our journey through the region of Bordeaux, where without a doubt the most wonderful thing I have discovered is not only how close, but also how totally diverse everything is. For example, in this show, we'll be sampling fresh oysters in the Bay of Arcachon. We'll bike ride through the prettiest of villages. We'll sample cognac in the place that they invented cognac. And right now, I'm gonna get your imagination working overtime as we step back in time to a medieval castle that's been in the same family for 700 years. So we have to go, the owner's waiting. Welcome to Chateau Roque Tellard, a monument that was living witness to life during the Renaissance with over 700 years of history, architecture, the juiciest stories. It's the most visited castle in the entire region. But I think what is truly amazing is that the same family still call this place home. How have you managed to keep this within your family for 700 years? Uh, well, I wasn't there 700 years ago. I gathered uh, that. How, how the family managed, uh, I don't know. Things just happened like that. Out of the, the seven castles the Pope built for himself and his family, Rock Dad is the only one still standing. Sebastian opens his home to countless tourists every day. And you can really tell he truly takes pride in sharing its history. OK, come in. Oh, now this is my kind of kitchen. Uh, well, this. this is the kitchen we use every day. Really? I can actually smell lunch being made. Uh, well, there's the smell of lunch and the smell of the chimney, because uh, that's the heating system of the house. Winter, hot fire, keeps you warm. In fact, every single ustensil in this room has a particular function. These massive copper pots, what would you use those for? Uh, we use those every year for the annual pig killing. Pig ends up his life in these big basins, we cook him in them, then we tin him up and put him under the form of pate. Well, one can only imagine being a dinner guest here. And while Sebastian and his family have adapted certain features to be able to live here, tradition is a vital part of their existence. Over the centuries, the castle has undergone its fair share of renovations, all designed to make it more livable. Uh, there you go. Magnificent. C'est magnifique. Oh, there's so much to take in. There's so much to take in. So this was the stables. Yeah, you, you can't smell the horses, but uh, you can imagine. Imagine this room and look at the transformation. Possibly the castle's most celebrated feature is the work of famed architect Viela Le Duc. They wanted the best and it was obvious Viel Le Duc was the man. He was the most referenced architect in the 19th century. He uses this blue background, you can see, and it's, it gives you the impression you're looking out through a window. And look at all these walls, you can see flies, bees, wasps, snails. You can spend hours in this room discovering all these animals. And at every single corner, you are reminded, you can feel that this is indeed a living medieval castle designed to protect its inhabitants from battle. The castle was in fact never attacked, although, as you can see, it's well equipped for the possibility. We have a moat. Of course you have a moat. It's a dry moat. Were they the original windows, the tiny windows up there? You've got to imagine, all the windows you see today were added on later. Originally, they were just arrow slits. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hundred of them on all four sides of the building. Well, that was an experience to have a private tour of a 700-year-old castle by the owner himself. I bet you could come back here in another 700 years and they'd still be doing tours, no doubt having a rave about the family living here today. In a funny way, it's a perfect example of what we're finding here in Bordeaux. There's so much history, but everything is still fully functioning 
And best of all for you and I, it's all open to share and enjoy. Hello there. We are cruising in style on board the Scenic Diamond through the magical region of Bordeaux in the southwest of France. Next stop, the fascinating little town of Bly. Far out. I don't know if it's because I love Game of Thrones, but this is intoxicating. I haven't even made it into the main building and already it's fascinating. You've got secret doorways, gate after gate after gate. Wonderful. In the 17th century, Bly was the gateway to Bordeaux and this defence system, now known as the Bly Citadel, was constructed to protect the region from invasion. Hostile vessels attempting to pass this iron blockade were greeted by relentless crossfire from the three forts. Rising like, like a, a behemoth up from the Gironde. Gironde. They are the dramatic words of my guide that I am listening to here. I wish I could claim those words to be my own, but no, they are on this little device which Scenic offers you. So if you want to wander independently and not miss any of the juicy history, all the little details of everywhere that you wander to, this is going to be your friend. And also, you can make the most of the wonderful accent of the guide on here. I love his voice. With my very own little portable guide in the form of this scenic tailor-made device, I can roam through the Citadel and revel in its history at my own pace. From here, I'm taking off with a real guide on Scenic's e-bikes for a cycle through the surrounding countryside. This is the scenery that French daydreams are made of. And if it wasn't for the independence of the bikes, you know what? I don't think we would ever quite have the opportunity to see it like this. Aha, uh -huh. so this is where the Here captains a... of the boats that use the area, this is where they yes. love to have their homes. Yes, because uh, right. it was very hot during summer Wait. and they prefer to have their house very near from the river. Of course. And it is the reason why the name of this road is the Captain Road. The because... Captain's Rue yes. the Captain. Exactly, exactly. The mix of off-board action and leisurely cruising are what make this journey so special. But for our chief in command, aka the gorgeous Captain Sebastian, there are loads of challenges that come with cruising on a tidal river, not to mention having his dad as his second in command. What's it like working with your dad? <laughs> Is it kind of lovely? It is great, yeah, it's fantastic. I, I actually started as an apprentice on, uh, on my father's ship, so now it's payback time. It's payback. Do you push him around? I try to. Good on you, <laughs> good on you, why not? I have also noticed going along the odd old shipwreck. It is. is. Right? We had uh, a lot of shipwrecks uh, that were placed deliberately by the Germans uh, during the Second World War. and. Uh, it was to stop the, the British from uh, coming into Bordeaux. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. and they are actually helping dredge the uh, channel for, for us. How much of a challenge does that make your job? I know where they all are, so it's okay. Okay. We are with the man, the ultimate <laughs> captain. It's a beautiful life. It's a beautiful life. Well, there is no doubt the wineries of the southwest of France are world class. But today, the vino is taking a little back step as we make our way to Cognac, a little town with a seriously big reputation.
The symbol of French luxury today is not, as I would have thought, fashion. It is actually the spirit of cognac. Cognac is the second biggest export of this country, bringing in over $4 billion to the French economy. And for the town of Cognac itself, its fortunes completely rise and fall according to the spirit's popularity. So the name Cognac is famous all over the world, but this town is more than just its brandy. Look at these narrow cobbled streets, aren't they gorgeous? The houses from the 15th through to the 18th century, Cognac's old town area is, trust me, an absolute must see. Look at that. Oh, it is so beautiful, I cannot cope. The beauty and the wealth of this town is quite obvious, but I need to give some credit to salt. That is how Cognac made its first fortune. So you've got to remember, during the Middle Ages, they needed the salt to preserve their food. And here, because of the river, this was the main trading port. It was like rivers of white gold. After the salt trade came the town's development as a centre for wine. And finally, the discovery of the double distillation process that put the town on the global map. There are several cognac houses in and around the town, but really, they do not come much bigger or more highly regarded than Remy Martin. Please explain, what is the difference between brandy and cognac, or is it the same thing? Well, it's almost the same thing. Cognac is a specific type of brandy. It's actually made only in this area. Uh, so the cognac area represents 75,000 hectares, and this is the only region in the world where you can produce cognac and call it cognac. Founded in the 1700s, Remy Martin's success isn't only due to its exclusivity, but its very long and much celebrated history. With Scenic, we are welcomed for a private tour of the entire estate. What is the reason for the slight tinge of black on all the buildings? Well, inside all of these buildings around us, there is cognac being aged, cognac in the making. When we put it in the barrel for the first time, mm -hmm. it's 70% alcohol. I love it. So it's very strong, and this creates evaporation, also called the angel's shear, the most poetic word for evaporation. There is a fungus that develops called the torula, which just stays there as long as the cognac's inside. Alrighty, I will be honest with you, I am a little bit more of a wine girl than a brandy lover. But excuse me, it would be bad manners not to. I've never had a cognac tasting before, okay. so why did you put ice in there? We've put some ice inside this glass because it's going to reveal all the aromas. It's really a way of poetically saying, um, imagine yourself walking in the forest after the rain. Of course. You can imagine all this plush scent that's exactly what we're trying to do. All right then. I would advise to start with the small sip because it is the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> Never stopped me before. Smooth. Very light. So we're going to taste our EXO, which stands for extra old. This is another reference of the house of Rémi Martin. Much stronger smell. Yeah, much more explosive. Much more explosive, that's the term. I feel like I could light my breath. <laughs> well, after nearly two weeks travelling with Scenic through Paris and the beautiful region of Bordeaux, we have reached the final leg of our journey. And we are sure ending on a high note, with a stop in the Bay of Arcachon and a visit to Europe's tallest sand ship. I have been waiting for this. We'll also be leaving our beloved home on board the Scenic Diamond and, oh, with a tear in my eye, I can tell you, all of our little luxuries, including the delicious food, they will be sorely missed. There's a lovely breakfast on board. You can have a quick breakfast upstairs. The buffet here is, is brilliant. But what I quite like to do is, here we go, I just order off the, uh, off the menu. Eggs Benedict, what do you think? Always win with that. The onboard cruising is just one of the many highlights of this wonderful, wonderful journey. You've got the food, you've got the wine, but then also you can just chill if you want to. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. That was mm. the whole point of picking this type of a cruise, to have the combination of both. You know, there's the good, fast part of it, there's the interesting stuff, but there's also the time that you need good to, to just... Good to disconnect. Enjoy life as it, as it flows by. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> While the region of Bordeaux is known for its land, or more specifically, its terroir, I love saying that word, terroir, it is also surprisingly close to the sea. This is just so idyllic. Is it okay to admit to you that when I heard I was going to Bordeaux, I never would have thought that I'd be coming down to the seaside? Yeah, everything is so close, it's amazing. And so totally different. The architecture is different. Mm -hmm. um, it, it feels like the, the mood is totally different here as well. Uh, the people are really all the time living here on holidays. When you come here, you have this impression to be on holiday all the time because you everything is simple. Arcachon Bay began life as a fishing village before its boom in the 19th century as a holiday hotspot for the well-to-do. These days, its relaxed vibe and seaside charm make it hugely popular with Francophiles as well as local tourists. What do you love about living here? I had the impression when I'm living here and I'm working here to be on holiday the whole year. Good place to live. A uh, good place to live. Back in the centre of town, you can do as the locals do and visit the daily market. For the French, this is really just a central part of life, isn't it? It's, Coming really, to the market. it's really in the centre of the life, of course. You go to the market to chat with the people, to joke with the people, to buy, of course, fruits and veggies, but to, to observe. And the perfect place to sample the famous Arcachon oysters. Delicious. Why are your oysters the best? Because they are formed with love. <laughs> She's going to speak with to the oysters, everybody, every day. Okay. And the toi. Mm. Uh, and then you have to drink the water with the lemon. This is the best. Oh, wow. Huh? Pure, fresh, nothing tart. C'est parfait. Superb, Captain. Superb. Bien <laughs> sûr. <laughs> There is no doubt the region has been blessed many times over when it comes to its diverse and an absolutely beautiful landscape. And just south of town is another of nature's great masterpieces, Dune du Palat. The crowds, well, they're large. And this sand dune is hugely popular, owing to it being the largest in all of Europe. Aha! Water and, and swamps and marshes. Oh, I get it. Oh, you're right, the view. Oh, yes, the view is amazing. Amazing, yeah? And it is only getting bigger, with the dune shifting east around a metre and a half each year. There is natural beauty every single direction you look in. Well, I think it's quite appropriate that I've brought you to what feels like the top of the world to wrap up our Bordeaux special. Have you enjoyed it? I have to admit, it has been nothing like what I was expecting. I just always thought that Bordeaux was lots of vineyards and the odd pretty chateau. Who knew it would be this diverse with this beautiful beach, sand dune, cosmopolitan Bordeaux city, quaint little villages, and of course, the most beautiful food and plonk. I tell you what, I will make you a promise. If I survive this tray trip, what was I thinking? I am definitely coming back. Should we go? <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs>